Greetings and salutations, today we will be covering the perplexing puzzle of the Frog Boys. This was the disappearance of five young boys outside the village of Daegu on March 26th, 1991. This has remained an unsolved mystery for more than three decades, and unfortunately it does not seem any closer to being solved. The Frog Boys' names were Chel Won, aged 13, Jo Ho Yeon, aged 12, Kim Young Gyu, aged 11, Park Chan In, aged 10, and Kim Jong Sik, aged 9. These boys were considered to be the closest of friends who coincidentally lived close to each other. On the day of their disappearance, the boys have ventured out to a stream near their homes in search of salamander eggs. Unfortunately, they would never be seen alive again. The media frenzy surrounding this case created a national sensation, which prompted the president, Ro Tae Wo, to order a massive manhunt to be done by the police in conjunction with the military. Unfortunately, despite the search efforts, the boys' disappearance remained an unsolved case for over a decade, and their discovery more than 11 years later by two hikers only raised more questions. It must be noted that the nickname, the Frog Boys, which was given to them, was little more than a misnomer, as the boys were never searching for frog eggs, only salamander eggs. However, the name became just one of many dubious pieces of information which would become questioned over the years after their disappearances. Said disappearance remained one of South Korea's most notorious missing persons cases, and while the investigation did yield many theories, unfortunately, the killer or killers have never been found. It must be noted that despite the passage of time, the case of the Frog Boys remains open and unsolved, leaving a haunting memory of a tragedy which shook an entire nation. The idyllic village outside of Daegu City was home to a tight-knit group of families whose houses formed a cul-de-sac, which the children often played, and they also played near a paddy field close to their homes. The boys were said to be closer than brothers, according to Chel Wu's father. It must be noted that some reports state that the families were the only ones with kids of similar ages, which made their bond even tighter. Park Chen's father shared how they were apparently dependent on him, yet never gave him any trouble, and Kim spoke of his own son, Young Yu, as being a very bright and cheerful child with a great personality. It must be noted that the day they went missing, March 26, 1991, was a public holiday, and during that day, Chel Won returned home sometime in the morning to grab a thicker jacket. However, when his father asked him where he was going, he simply replied that he was going to play outside. Now, by 1 p.m., Wu received a call from the Taekwondo Academy which his son attended, who reported that his son had not shown up. Soon, he would discover that his child was not the only one missing as all five boys were nowhere to be found. Immediately, this caused them to attempt to search the mountains, yet they found no trace of their children. As evening fell, reporters would hear from the police that five boys had been reported missing. The day the frog boys disappeared was a chilly spring morning on March 26, 1991. This day, the lives of five families in South Korea's Daegu region were changed forever. It was also the day of a historic election. Said election had garnered the attention of everyone and caused them to be engrossed in the ongoing political developments. In the midst of this political activity, the five boys, all notably close friends, had decided to venture out to search for salamander eggs in a nearby stream on Mount Wayong. Their homes, which shared a small courtyard in their village, were arranged in a circle similar to that of a cul-de-sac. These boys were often seen playing together in the areas around the mountain itself. As the day wore on and the sunlight began to wane, the boys had not returned home. This caused their parents to become rather anxious, since none of their boys had showed up for their taekwondo lessons. In their parents' initial panic, soon turned to frustration as they were told by authorities to wait for their children to eventually come back. However, as the night wore on, the boys would remain missing, leading the already frantic parents to begin to turn on each other. 
blaming one another for their children's disappearances. Amidst this chaos, one of the fathers, Kim, reportedly had a vivid dream that left him feeling rather unsettled. In the dream, he saw his son outside the door, peeking in but refusing to come back. The next day, a massive search operation involving hundreds of police officers and soldiers from the local area was launched to find the missing boys. This search would go on for weeks and eventually the military was called in proper to assist in the search. However, despite several promising leads over the years, the case remained unsolved. The families of the missing boys would continue to hold on to hope, hope that one day their children would be returned. In the meantime, the tragic disappearance of the Frog Boys would remain a mystery, puzzling many of the top minds of South Korea. Warangyong San, also known as Warangyong Mountain, was the main crime scene. This mountain was one of many in the Daegu area and it was the closest mountain to the village where the five boys lived. Some note that in Korea it is common for children to play in the surrounding mountains and feel safe. However, unfortunately, this wasn't the case for the five boys who ventured into War Young Sun Mountain that day. The stream they had supposedly intended to visit was situated near an army base along with being close to the army base's very own shooting range. Two factors that may have played an important role in what happened to them. Although many people believe that the boys were killed on the mountain, there is some amount of speculation based on soil samples which claim that their bodies may have been moved. Furthermore, there is doubt that they were killed all at the same time. This is in part due to the disappearance report. It is notable that when the boys' families realized that they were missing, they went and reported their concerns to the police. This is where one of the first missteps happened. The police supposedly did not take the disappearances seriously, and the parents had to create their own flyers to indicate that their sons were missing. Unfortunately, the police would wind up redistributing the flyers, and they would also go on to change the description from missing to runaways. For three years, the five fathers had essentially quit their jobs and gone out traveling throughout Korea, distributing flyers and gathering leads in an attempt to find their missing children. When they returned to work, it was only due to having accumulated massive amounts of debt. One of the fathers would even go on to mention that they were followed by amateur detectives and they were constantly being watched, making it impossible for them to express any emotion which included any shred of hope or joy for fear of public opinion turning on them. This is in part due to the media coverage, which must be noted did not begin until five days after the boys had failed to return home. And there are certain points where the news would go on to sensationalize the story. However, it appears that the news could not even get the basic facts right from the beginning, hence titling the boys as the Frog Boys. Now this may have been a media savvy move due to Salamander Egg Boys not sounding as catchy as Frog Boys. However, this this misnomer could have potentially led to the muddling of leads, sealing the boy's fate, or further stalling any form of closure for the family. During the search, there was a dispatching of more than 300,000 police officers in order to operate a special investigation center tasked with finding the boys. They would search irrigation ways, reservoirs, bus terminals, and a myriad of different stations nationwide. The search for the boys would captivate the nation of South Korea in 1991. Despite numerous leads and tips from concerned citizens, authorities would be completely and utterly unable to find the children. Donations and efforts to find them would pour in. However, none would be successful, and the case would not move forward. That is until 1996, when the case took a turn for the dramatic. When a Korean American from the emerging field of criminal psychology by the name of Kim Ga Won made a rather astounding and bold claim. Without any evidence, Ga Won accused John Sik's family of being guilty and stated that all five boys were buried beneath the house. The media and neighbors, along with curious onlookers, flocked 
to the scene as police brought in a massive excavator to dig up the foundation of Gaowon's home. Despite overwhelming attention and resources poured into this, no bodies were found. The entire ordeal would wind up as a setback, one which would hamper the development of criminal psychology for a long time to come. This was to the point that Gaowon was forced out of the field entirely. On September 26, 2002, the remains of the boys would be discovered, ironically rather near where they were searching for salamanders. Shockingly, their bodies were found tied together, their clothes partly removed. Some of them showed signs of blunt force trauma. Sadly, they were just under a mile from their home. The police would initially report that they had found no evidence of foul play and noted that the boys must have huddled together to stay warm. However, this explanation seemed to make no sense to those investigating the case. They noted it was not cold outside when the boys went missing, and that the boys could have easily made it home within just a few minutes, while completely ignoring the fact that they were bound together. After a thorough forensic examination, investigators discovered serious cranial damage to the heads of three of the boys, along with a bullet wound, indicating that one of the boys was shot in the head. It must be noted that searchers also found unspent bullets at the scene knotted in their clothing. Many theories have been put forth after this evidence was discovered, including a serial killer or a psychopath, bullies from their school, or even a North Korean sympathizer. These theories would include things as outlandish as the involvement of aliens in the slaying of the boys. However, the most plausible theory was that someone from the nearby Korean military base, whether accidentally or with maliciousness, murdered the children. Due to the election, that were being held, the military base was nearly empty and access to the shooting range was restricted to officers at the time. And the most persistent theory was that one of the boys had been unintentionally shot, this being the boy with a bullet wound. And in order to cover up this crime or accident, the other boys were slain. Investigators at one point claimed that the bullets and the empty casings found with the boys were army issue and that the boys had picked them up on their trail. However, this explanation falls apart due to many of the bullets that were buried were tied within knots around the children, not within their pockets where they would have carried them if they had just been finding them and picking them up, not to mention the bullet wound in the child's head. The mystery of the frog boys continues to haunt the families. Unfortunately, no one except the killer or killers knows what led to the deaths of the boys. Despite various theories, the mystery continues. It must be noted that the statute of limitations for first degree murder initially expired in 2006. However, it was extended in 2015 in the hopes that the perpetrators would one day be brought to justice. For now, the mystery of the Frog Boys remains one of the most infamous cold cases in South Korea's criminal history, and the families of the victims continue to search for answers. If you remained with me until the end, I I thank you, and I do hope you stay tuned and subscribe for more content.